Good morning. Today is Thursday, July 21st, 2022. Ernest Becker wrote a classic book called Denial of Death. It's remarkable. If you have not read it, I recommend it highly. If you have read it, I recommend rereading it. But he writes an inscription at the beginning. To the memory of my beloved parents, who unwittingly gave me, among many other things, the most paradoxical gift of all, a confusion about heroism. For many years, I have been reluctant to talk about Pinchas, the person after whom this week's Torah portion is named, the central character in the opening scene and the end of last week's Torah portion. And I have hesitated to speak about Pinchas because what Pinchas did was dangerous. And because Pinchas has been co-opted as a symbol of a representative of extremism and zealotry and violence. And I have great difficulty with extremism and zealotry, especially because of the overwhelming probability of abuse. Because Pinchas as a role model leads to a world that frightens me. But the narrative actually has a very different message. And it's a message that is crucial for us to learn. So at the end of last week's Torah portion, there is this terrible event of this public sin of immorality and idolatry with the women of Moab. And there is a Jewish man, Zimri, and a non-Jewish woman, a Moabite woman, Cusby, and they're engaged in this immoral act in public. And as a result of that, there is a plague brought by God against the Jewish people and 24,000 Jewish people die. And that plague is ongoing and everyone is frozen. Moshe is there, Aharon is there, everyone is there and everyone is frozen. And Pinchas takes action and he kills this couple. Now, please don't glorify the killing. First of all, our rabbis in the Talmud explain that what Pinchas did, there are too many qualifications, too many requirements to consider it practical in any other situation. And it is still a deeply disturbing narrative. But the effect is Bateatzer Hamagefa. The plague stops. Pinchas saves thousands of people by halting the plague. So what is the Torah teaching us with this narrative? I think you may be interested in the work of Dr. Philip Zimbardo, especially his book, the Lucifer Effect. Dr. Zimbardo was a psychologist. He taught for many years at Stanford University in California. And you may remember a number of years ago, there was a terrible incident, uh, um, uh, ongoing activity of United States soldiers in Iraq, in Baghdad, at the Abu Ghraib prison where they were torturing, committing acts of uh, atrocities against prisoners that they had taken. It was a terrible, terrible thing. You may remember it from a number of years ago. And the initial government response when these atrocities came to light is that these 
soldiers were a few bad apples. There were a few disturbed bad actors among all of the good soldiers who were there. And Dr. Zimbardo found in his research with them, he, he studied them and over a lifetime of study, he came to the conclusion that the line between good and evil is not a solid line. It's permeable. In a given situation, it is impossible to predict which person will choose which path. It is not true that those soldiers had something in their background that, so to speak, preconditioned them to do this, like a background of crime or drugs or emotional problems. That was not true. He quotes Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who writes, the line between good and evil cuts through the heart of every human being. Just about any person, just about any one of us, can become a villain or a hero. But we make a serious mistake in who we recognize as heroes. If I ask you the question, who do you recognize as a hero? Well, Moshe is a hero, is a hero. Martin Luther King is a hero. Mother Teresa, Superman is a hero. Those are poor choices to hold up as models of heroism because they're unrealistic models for us. They had great ability. They devoted their lives to sacrificing for others. Where does that have to do with me? If they're heroes, then how could I possibly become a hero? And so why should I even try? What Dr. Zimbardo found is that we need to teach ourselves and we can teach ourselves, and I would say especially our children, is that every one of us is a potential hero. I am a hero in waiting. Every ordinary person can be a hero because in a given dramatic situation, there are three paths in front of you, and there are always three paths in front of you. Number one, you can perpetrate evil. Number two, you can remain passive and inactive, a bystander. And number three, you be can become a hero. And there is no way to predict who will choose which path. You have to train yourself and you have to teach your children to be ready when that moment comes. And here is Dr. Zimbardo's main finding that you can train yourself. You can label yourself. I am a hero in waiting. And simply doing that, the way that a person looks at themselves as being capable of heroism when it is called for, that has an effect, Dr. Zimbardo found, on how we will act in that moment. You can teach yourself, I can teach myself, to be a deviant but a deviant in a positive way. A deviant who is willing to go against the passive group when it's necessary. And my, if, if I am in a situation where there is a large group that is remaining passive and inactive in the face of evil, in the face of an act of aggression, I can teach myself to be deviant to that, not to go along with that majority. Wesley Autry 
is a construction worker in New York City. And on January 2nd, 2007, he was standing on a subway platform in Manhattan with his two children. And there were 75 other people on the subway platform. And a man, stranger, fell onto the track. And a train was coming into the station. Everyone freezes because it is certain death for the man on the tracks. Autry Wesley hands his kids to a stranger, jumps on the tracks, lays down on top of this stranger in the middle of the tracks, and the train rolls over them, and they survive with no injury. He later said, I did what anyone could do and what everyone ought to do. That's the lesson of Pinchas. Pinchas was no one special. Pinchas was one of a crowd. And there were people much greater than him who were there. Moshe was there. Aharon was there. All of the leaders, all of the greatest people were there. But at the moment when this action was taking place and a plague was befalling the Jewish people, everyone froze. Moshe froze. Aharon froze. All the leaders froze. Because, of course, at that moment, for every one of them, there were three paths open to them. Pinchas wasn't greater than any of the others. But what's unique about Pinchas is at that moment, he decided to be a hero. One day, you and I will suddenly be in a situation, a dramatic situation, with three paths in front of us. We can either choose to perpetrate evil, God forbid, or to remain passive, inactive, or to decide to become a hero. It may only happen once in our lives. But if you don't choose boldly, if you don't deviate from the frozen inaction of the group around you, you will live the rest of your life wondering if you could have been a hero. Jody Picot, in her novel My Sister's Keeper, writes, Who we are isn't so much about what we do, but rather what we're capable of when we least expect it. Pinchas teaches us what we are capable of when we least expect it is to decide to be a hero. My friends, I want to wish you a great day. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.